La 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 painting tonight. La 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 la. Okay. How's everybody doing today? Welcome to another episode of Painting with a Grumpy Old Man. I am Mike Tarver. I am that grumpy old man. And I am doing a painting today. Hope you guys can all see this okay. It's kind of dark and late at night and it's been a cloudy day. So we don't have the best, most beautiful uh, thing going on. So... I do appreciate everybody coming out and uh, painting with me. And I'm waiting for your thing to come up. And it should be pretty soon here. So, everybody hold on to your hats. Okay. Are we live yet? Are we live yet? Okay, let me check my phone. It's actually on. Hey, there we are. Hey, guys. How you doing today? Sorry. My response phone is not doing too well today. Let's see. Oh, that's great. Alrighty, I'm going to start painting. What I did was to draw out, I'm doing this as an abstract. It doesn't represent anything other than I thought it was cool and I wanted to paint it and that's what's going to happen. So um, I drew some circles. I did think far enough ahead to put my checkerboard highway on first and the reason I did that is because it is extremely long and tedious to do that. It takes quite a while to do that. And so um, I got everything drawn up. The background, you can notice there's a variance of color from a, a pink into yellows, greens, blues, violets, all kinds of different colors going through here. I had, as usual, a leftover paint on my palette last time I painted. And I sort of made a brushed effect so that I get this kind of a Really nice color fading into color. It's really pretty. If you were right next to it, you can see how beautiful it is. Uh, this is a bird, but if you try to look up what bird this is, you'll be sadly disappointed because um, it's not a regular bird. It's, it's the bird of paradise. Bird of paradise flew up my nose. You guys wouldn't remember that. That, that is older than my parents, and I am old. So, you can only imagine, I'm basically going to use three brushes today, I may change later, but um, angle brush, small angle brush here, um, a shorter angle brush, a little bit thicker, and then a fine line brush. If I get impatient, which may happen, uh, I may use a different paintbrush to get there. I really enjoy doing these kind of paintings. I call them uh, uh, doodleism, and I like to doodle a lot, and I have my whole life. It's one of the ways that I relax. In fact, in school, if I doodled while I listened to the teacher, I actually got better grades than if I just tried to focus because I could only focus for so very long, and then it was over. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm putting sort of a crest on this bird here. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be cool. So, I've been talking to my students and asking them, well, what do you think I should talk about on my lives? And they're like, uh, art? And I go, well, that's kind of boring. <laughs> Nothing personal to you fellow artists. But sitting here and talking about just, wow, did you see how good I did that? Just knock that thing flat off. Okay, we're going to flip that around a little bit, make it a little nicer. All right, so 
Um, just sit around. If you just sit around talking about painting, that's nice. If you have paint people who want to listen to what you're doing for your technique or your style, if you just want to watch somebody paint and be entertained by that, it can get tedious just watching somebody paint. Um, and I'm not worried about being perfect. I'm more worried about, you can see my blood sugar is up today. My hands are shaking, so that's okay. It shall not stop me. Art shall not be stopped by the shaking of a hand. I am, and this is very bright white. I have not bothered to mix it down at all. I probably will come back and add some extra colors into the white. But I want to start off with a bright white, unlike what people tell you to do. And sort of make a white plumage, like a, I don't know, a fancy hat that people think is beautiful, but really is kind of weird. I was talking to my students about what should I talk about? And they said, well, talk about yourself. And I said, well, I'm, you know, vastly boring. And so, and I have no major opinions that I care to share. I may have some, but um, let's face it, they're none of your business. Um, and you don't really care what I think. What am I going to change the world? No, not likely. If you believe one thing, that's what you're probably going to believe when you're done. So uh, here's what I believe. Treat people kindly. Treat people with love. They're all creations of God. You don't have to agree with somebody to treat them with respect and dignity. That's not necessary. Okay? That's my big stance. I hope everybody is all over that big stance there. Um, but uh, I... Uh, I thought about it. what am I going to talk about? And when I'm with the kids at school, it's so easy because it's interactive. If you've ever done a live and you're by yourself, um, that's a, that's a bit more challenging than uh, than you think. I'm just going to put a little white in here so I can separate the wing section from the head section. That's going to be a different color, but I want to get these plumes in the back as well. But they curl a lot, so I'm going to use a tiny brush and curl them more gently here. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, you know, why don't I tell, talk to you about what I talk to my kids at school about, you know. So here's your first lesson in, um, in postmodernism or... Your first lesson in uh, the Peloponnesian Wars. Okay, I'm just kidding. We're really not going to talk about that. But I talked to them a lot about my childhood growing up and what was going on in my life and the characters in my family. I, mean, I think if you have a family, you know you have some characters in your family. I have many, many characters in my family. But I was thinking about growing up, one of my favorite things to do was to go visit my grandparents. I lived in Florida. My grandparents lived in Roanoke, Alabama, or Weedowie. It was kind of in between them since they really weren't in a town. But it was so much fun for me. They lived in the country. I grew up in a city. So I'm, you know, crowds and traffic and blah, blah, blah every day. I lived in Jacksonville, Florida. And, uh, but I loved the country. I loved being out in the country. It was just so, uh, I don't know, it's just so beautiful to me. And uh, I would go there every summer. My parents would drop drop us off for us to have an experience, but really, they just wanted a vacation alone, let's just be honest. You know, that, my little kid thought, oh, what great parents, they're letting me have some time with my grandparents. And <coughs> as an adult, I go, those suckers were getting free two-week vacations every summer. No kids, no nothing. But uh, that's fine. It, it worked out good for me. I really enjoyed it. I'm going to be a little bit more bold with my paint here. Because I'm that kid who draws too hard with this pencil and breaks his lead. Can't use mechanical pencils, by the way, because I will break them. Okay. Now we'll come back and touch this up. Um, if you paint with me long, you're going to notice that I just pick things up and paint them wherever I can, wherever it's easier for me to get to. It's so much easier if I'm right on top of it. These don't have to be particularly precise. Just fluffy little feathers. 
coming down through here. It's filling in with sort of a little plumage. These aren't really feathers, I guess. They're more like the tail. And uh, just having a little bit of fun here with it. Um, but I would go every summer, and they lived in, like I said, Alabama. And it was really cool to me. And I didn't realize that at the time that I was actually child labor. Uh, back in the day when they didn't worry about things like that. Uh, and my parents dropped me off so that they could get a vacation, and my grandparents could get farm hands because they had a farm, a big old farm, and it was it was awesome, and I loved it. But then I realized, hey, it's five o'clock in the morning. I'm out in the middle of the wet, dirty clay, and I'm picking beans. Which, by the way, at that time I did not even like. Like there were hot beans. I said no. Nope. I go into my song, beans, beans, the magical fruit, as mature as I was. But I, I really enjoyed those years. I really, really enjoyed those two weeks every summer because we got to go swimming in the creek. And because my parents weren't around, my grandparents had a little bit more latitude with me and things that my mother would have a heart attack at happening, my grandparents didn't really care. We would go to the creek to go swimming, and what? I had heard about somebody who skinny dipped. So we go down to the creek, um, and I never caught on to it until I was a little bit older, but they always brought a bar of soap. Uh, so they were trying to save money on, on water bills. And so <laughs> I didn't know that. I'm like, okay, woohoo! They bring a bar of soap. But I said, you know, people skinny dip, I want to do that. Okay? No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not a teenager. I wasn't Randy or anything like that. I was just, just a young, young teenager, and I was a young, young boy, like nine or ten, and I wanted to skinny dip. And my grandfather, who we called, he was my step grandfather. We called him Big Daddy, and that was a good term for him because he was about six foot tall, but he was easily over three hundred and fifty pounds, and he was a truck driver, and a roughneck, and that kind of a thing. So we called him Big Daddy, and we loved him. Um, uh, I was his favorite, as you well know. I'd be anybody's favorite. But uh, we were with Big Daddy at the at the creek. We picked our beans. We'd done our chores that we thought were fun activities, but were really child labor. And uh, on and on and on. And, and we were. We were, we were going to the swimming hole. That was our reward. Um, and so I said, Big Daddy. He goes, what? I said, you ever been skinny dipping? And he goes, oh, I've been skinny dipping many a time, son. And I'm like, cool, can I skinny dip? He goes, I don't care. So we were out there, and at this particular creek, we called it the creek because it was a um, creek, and they had a big old giant stone, a big old rock that we would jump off of into the water. The water was about 30 below zero. The weather was 98 degrees, but the water was like 30 below zero. And so we're out there and we are swimming in this, uh, in this creek, right? And, and I'm, I'm excited. I, I whip my little clothes off and I'm like, I'm fixing to go skinny dipping. Look at me, mama. No, don't look at me, Mom. That would be really weird. But look at me. I'm going to go skinny dipping. And I'm a big boy now. But uh, I'm going to make these a little bit stronger so you can see that it doesn't just look like terrible little lines. Now they look like terrible fat lines. So I got my clothes off. I'm in the water. It's very, very cold. Um, but... I didn't care. I was special and I knew it, buddy. I, <laughs> I was out there splashing away and I, my brother's with me. I said, hey guys, let's do this. And my brother's looked at me like, you are some kind of an idiot. Um, and I was, but that was my job in the family. I was the kind of the wild one, the black sheep. They'd be in prayer meeting. I'd be in the back with Susie. But uh, I, I actually don't know anybody named Susie. I just made that up. But, uh, <laughs> so don't tell my wife. She doesn't know about Susie. Uh, and uh, so anyway, we're, we're there, so I, I didn't care. 
I'm brave, you know, I'm a brave little 10 year old. And so I uh, whip my clothes off, I swim across the pond. It's cold, I mean, it's cold, cold. It's the kind of cold that doesn't really deserve to be alive. It's cold. That, that's how cold it was. Just very, 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 very cold. And I climbed up the bank, went over, got on the jumping rock, and I said, Woohoo! And I jumped. And I felt free. I said, I am free. Look at me. I felt like something, you know, just amazing until I hit the water <laughs> and realized that underwear and bathing suits actually do have a function. <laughs> you know, hitting the water was not my prime happy moment in my life. Hitting that water was a surprise in many, many ways. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that, so I, I, that was the first and the last time that uh, the grumpy old man tried to skinny dip. Had I been more logical and a little bit older, I would have probably thought, you know, something bad could happen here. Something could be injured. Maybe no big deal to you, but it was big to me. And so I'm jumping. I jump off this. Thing and I, I tell you what, I, I don't think I walked straight for a week. It was it was awful. This is a, a bird. I don't know what kind of bird it is. The bird of paradise, which doesn't make sense, or I'd be making them out of a paradise. These are feathers in my imagination. In your imagination, they may be something else. I like the blue color, man. It's really pretty. Okay. Blue wing. I'm going to come off this wing a little bit with some little dippity doos. Okay. That kind of looks cool. I tell myself. All right. That's kind of nice. That's a nice blue color. The ball down here, that's what it is, is also going to be blue. Don't worry, people. I'll give him his feet back. But right now, I'm just taking his feet off. It's not like they're in the right place anyway. But in my imaginary world, these feet are. Uh, but I, I loved my grandparents. I mean, it was they had a, a nice old farmhouse with a big old wood burning fireplace, and man, it was nice. You get up in the morning and you'd smell that my grandmother in there cooking the bacon, and oh, so good. Everything on that on that plate um, is still in my heart today, <laughs> unfortunately. But it was oh, I just loved it so much. And my grandparents were from Alabama, so they didn't really speak the same language that the rest of us speak. Um, and it was really weird because my father had grown up uh, in Alabama, and he was an English major in college, and so uh, and became a teacher later on. But uh, <laughs> he never, I couldn't tell if he was from Alabama. I wasn't even sure he's from the South at all. He just, he was definitely a well spoken, well educated man. And so, uh, you know, you, you couldn't tell that he was from Alabama. But my grandparents, Big Daddy and Grandma Kraft, that was their names. Her name was actually Lila Georgiana. So. Somebody didn't like their daughter. All right, so we're gonna, I'm gonna go back with a little darker blue coming from this direction. That's how I like to blend it. Do the light out and then come back with a dark like this. And kind of back and forth it right here toward the center. Spread that color evenly. Do, 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 do. But, um, and this doesn't have to look perfect, so uh, don't judge. And I'm going to draw a little shadow underneath here, just to give it some depth. Okay, perfectly fine there. All right, All right so 
but we get that for him breakfast. We go out and do some silly sort of little tour. Incomplete, completely wrong. And my grandparents always had to go back and fix it uh, because, let's face it, we were just kids. We would build forts and run through where they had 40 acres of wood and streams and oh man, it was just so much fun. It was just so much fun to uh, to be a kid on my farm. Even though I wasn't aware that I was working for my biscuits. But uh, I just remember my grandpa, uh, Big Daddy, he he was a drinker. And uh, and I, I'm not condoning drinking. I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm not telling you anything. That's your, that's your, between you and God, you take care of that. But uh, uh, he was a big drinker. I mean, moonshine, beer, liquor, it didn't matter. Whatever he could get there at the time is what he drank. And he drank a lot of it. And so uh, when I got older, 15, 16 years old, and I could see above the steering wheel, I found out that I was a designated driver for, for Backwoods, Alabama, when I'm with my grandfather. Now, my mom never knew any of this. Bless her soul. Um, she never knew any of this, or there would have been several people getting beaten, but she did not know about it, and I'm still not going to tell her. So, you know, if you feel brave like that, you go. But Brother Mike here is just going to keep his mouth shut and not get in trouble. A lot of emotion here. You got to get a lot of emotion in this. And I haven't, I don't have a color scheme, in case you're wondering. I'm just painting. I'm doodling, but I'm doodling with paint at this point. So, I got a nice little, and I don't want this to stick out like a sore thumb. I don't want it to kind of blend in. Blending thing, little movement, dashes and dots. If you see me paint before, you know I'm big into the dashes and dots. Dots, 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 dots. It's kind of a nice little purple. But uh, yeah, he was a big time drinker and he, he'd go, I love you, boy. I love you better than the rest of them. <laughs> I love you too, Big Daddy. Uh, get back in the car. And so it was, I mean, it was one of those things, man. It's just, they were in the country and I never saw a police officer. I don't know why, but they just were not there. But they should have been because there was a 15 year old boy driving a drunk man home. And we'd always end up in a bar, and that time in history, I guess it was okay to take your <laughs> your 15-year-old grandchild into a honky-tonk dive, I don't know. But uh, nonetheless, there I was. And uh, so it was a very interesting experience for me. But uh, yeah, he loved, when he got drunk, he got very loving. He was a very loving man. Some people who get drunk get just mean. But he wasn't mean at all. He was, uh, he was funny. He was loving. And then, uh, of course, I didn't know how to get anywhere because I didn't actually live there. And so whenever he had me drive, we'd be lost, inevitably. To this day, I haven't got over the habit. So uh, I'm just doing blending and stuff here with my special tool. He has a special tool. <coughs> no, no, I do not. So These are going to be grays and stuff. And I'm going to come back and fix that up a little bit later. But right now, I'm not really too worried about it. I'm just, just freewheeling it, man. Freewheeling it. But I want to go with some nice blue grays right here. Boy, these are pretty colors. Let's get that a little bit darker. Put a little black in there. As my friend Jose Trujillo says, gray is restful. Gray is the color where your eyes can rest in a painting. And that's awesome. So... Me and Big Day, we ran all over the place, man. We were, we were it, buddy. And uh, I felt, I, you know, I, of course, I'm the skinny dipper, so I felt really big and important as a teenager that I could take care of my grandpa and make sure he got home all right and stuff. But it didn't make any difference because the key thing factor of that is we had to go home eventually where Grandma was waiting, and Grandma wasn't too impressed, wasn't too impressed with us at all. I couldn't believe it, you know, 
my little mind couldn't conceive of the reason why she would not be proud of her grandson. After all, I brought her wonderful, loving, half-drunk uh, old husband home. And uh, so the first thing she'd say when we walked in the door, she goes, Michael, you go back in the bedroom right now. I can't have you seeing this. <laughs> and then I'd hear her go. It took a good 15, 20 minutes just to get warmed up. <laughs> and then the rest of the time, you know, uh, she just kept going, what? You're so irresponsible taking that grandbaby out there. You're drinking and running around like a wild man. And uh, you're like, oh, Joe, I was doing no harm in his life the whole time, or blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, man, I just love this place, man. Look, it's like Disneyland for people who never learned to read or write. So it's nice. You know, they were good, hardworking farmers. He was actually, I told you, a truck driver. And that guy was beast strong, man. Every time I thought I could uh, beat him in an arm wrestling or anything like that, he reminded me of why he was uh, the alpha. <laughs> and why... Uh, uh, I wasn't the beta. I was all the way down to Omega. <laughs> that was the last on the list. So, yeah, he was funny. But uh, after a while, he inevitably, because he couldn't beat my grandma. My grandma was smart. She was a nurse. Uh, and that old hillbilly truck driver could not outthink her, outmaneuver her, anything. He was not going to win the fight. It just didn't matter how long and hard he argued or tried. He was not going to win that particular fight. And so it always ended up on the same thing. Now, he had heart problems, and a lot of people do, that eat nothing but fat back their entire lives, um, which, by the way, I love. Um, but I can't have it. Ergo, I am a grumpy old man, because my wife is also much smarter than me and also won't let me do what I want. So anyway, he always went back to his uh, standby. He had a... He had a an excuse that always got him off the hook because he had heart problems. And he said, Joe, Lala Joe, I think I'm having a spell. <laughs> Which was, I can't take this anymore. I'm going to lay down in the bed. And so and that's where he'd go, buddy. He was right back in that bed. Lala Joe, I'm having a spell. I'm like, I tried that with my, I got home. She'd be yelling at me about something. I said, Mom, I can't do this. I'm having a spell. She goes, don't you even, don't you even try that. <laughs> Michael Tarver. Yeah. It, it worked for Grandpa, but it did not work for his grandchild. So, uh, bad news for me. But, uh, yeah, he's having a spell. And then, like, ten minutes later, the dude would be calling us into the bedroom. If you might, Wayne, he's there. Get in here. And whichever fool, and I say fool because you had to be the answer him, uh, would, it would go in there, and it was almost always me because I adored the man. And uh, <laughs> I go, what you need, Big Daddy? You, you feeling bad? And he goes, no, nah, boy, I just wanted to throw you a kiss. And he'd be laying there in his boxer shorts, nothing left to my imagination, scarred irrevocably. There are not counselors that can fix what he did to me. God, and still I loved him. So I think that's something like Stockholm Syndrome or something. I don't know what it is. But uh he was, uh, he would lift his leg up and fart. I mean, just pass gas right there, right at me. And it wasn't, you know, around me. It was, I mean, he pointed. He had like a laser cannon. He was like, yeah, laser cannon, man. <laughs> and so, and he pointed at me, and I go, what in the world would you do that for, Big Daddy? And he'd go, I'm throwing you kisses. I'm like, okay. I never kissed on the first date. So, uh. He was a he was a character man. Finally, he passed away. Oh, I remember being like I was ten years old the first time my mother came into my room and says, "Your big daddy's very very ill. He's had a heart attack and, and a stroke at the same time." Now, that's a hard drinking man when you have a heart attack and a stroke at the same time. You got to earn that. That's not just giving away for free, there, buddy. Like so, <laughs> he's like, and uh, my mom looked at me and says, "Mike, I know you love him." And I said, yeah, I love Big Daddy. That's my dude. And uh, she says, but I don't think he's going to make it this night. He ain't going to last much longer. So he actually died 20 years later <laughs> when I was 30. Uh, 
but of a stroke and a heart attack. But that guy, I never saw him eat but really two things. We'd come out for breakfast, and there'd be bacon and sausage and eggs and, and grits and, and um, you know, pancakes. Because Grandma, but she's like, oh, grandkids are here. There's going to be some cooking going on. And so uh, <laughs> she came out. Uh, he would eat nothing, but, I mean, basically, that dude just ate fat. I mean, just fat. That's all he ate. And uh, so uh, how he lived as long as he did is absolutely beyond me. <laughs> but I love that guy so much, man. I love you, Mike. And I remember, I mean, one time, he didn't even care. I mean, I, I, don't, I mean, he loved me. He said it every time he was drunk. But, <laughs> yeah, so that must be true. Um, but every time, buddy, every time, Something would go on, and I remember he'd been out, and I, I was there and getting ready to take him home and stuff, and uh, we're driving uh, with his nephews, some of his nephews from his brother, and uh, they were they were drunk too, and they didn't want me to drive because something might happen. Figure that one out. But I got thirsty, man. You know, it, Alabama, it gets hot up in Alabama. It's moist and all, but, man, it's hot. It's, it's so hot up there that, you, I mean, you can barely breathe. You can barely breathe. And so I'm sitting in the back seat, and I'm like, Big Daddy? And he goes, yeah, boy, what do you want? I said, I'm hungry. I'm really hungry. And uh, <laughs> he goes, here you go, drink some of this. So he hands me back a, a, a milk jug full of water. So I'm really excited now because I am absolutely dying of thirst. And uh, so, you know, I figure, yeah, cool, water. And I have a problem when I drink. I don't like just sip things. I'm not a sipper. I'm not that guy. I'm the guy who grabs the Coke and by the time I tilt the bottle back down, there's only half a Coke left. I mean, I, I like to guzzle my Cokes. And so... Um, that's exactly what I did when he handed me the thing of water. Only in it wasn't it wasn't Coke. Um, it was it was moonshine. And uh, I swear my eyes bulged out. Uh, it was I mean my eyes bulged out and uh, my throat burned. I'd never felt anything like it before. I didn't drink. Uh, not that I never did in my life, but at that time in my life, up to that time in my life, I had not had any alcohol. I mean, I wasn't, except for what I snuck out of Grandma's pantry and her wine, and that tasted more like jelly than wine. Uh, but uh, that, I, that moonshine tore me up. Tore, I started coughing, hacking, eyes watering, on the verge of, of throwing up, and my sainted beloved step-grandfather, Big Daddy, looks back at me and says, sorry, I don't got no tomato juice to mix with it. Like somehow, <laughs> somehow, this, at that time I think I was 16, somehow that's, that, uh, that tomato juice was going to change the nature of that synthetic acid that they had fed me. Um, it was not a good thing. But, uh, and then I ended up getting yelled at when I got home. You smell like alcohol too. I said, but you know. <laughs> Apparently, Grandma did not care. I'd fallen into his sinful ways. My grandma was a great Christian woman. Um, I loved her. My brother actually led her to Christ. My older brother. But uh, I just, I just remember, man. She, uh, she laid the law down. How dare I get drunk even though I didn't know. I wasn't even drunk, actually. I was, uh, I was ill still. I was still feeling nauseous. So, actually, if anybody, she should have just kept on yelling at Big Daddy. Cause, uh, now, when I got older, 18, 19 years old, and my grandfather would come down to visit us, right? And he'd come to where I was working, wherever I was working, and he'd say, what time are you getting off? which was code for, I need somebody to take me to a bar where the grandma can't see because I'm not supposed to be drinking because I have strokes and heart attacks. I said, about three? He said, I'll come pick you up at three. 
He said, okay. And at 3 o'clock he'd come around and we ended up going to this one place. Uh, what was that? It was a biker bar. I, if you knew anything about me, I, uh, I am not a biker. I love motorcycles. I think they're beautiful machines, and I think it's cool if people get into that lifestyle. And that, that's cool. I don't want something between my legs that, that vibrates for you know more than uh, eight or nine hours at a time, and then get off and get drunk, get back on it, and do it again. I, motorcycles are awesome. Working on them would probably be a lot of fun, but I am not a biker, and I don't think I would do well as a biker but uh, where we went was a biker bar and folks were no joke they were, it, it wasn't like welcome in Mike you middle class white suburban dude them people were rough they were uh, they all knew Jesus because they kept saying his name over and over so I, I thought they knew him but uh my little blue eye there. But you know, it, it was just, uh, and he drank, man. He kept buying. And my friends showed up because I knew where this place was. And they went there a lot because they were bikers. And uh, so they show up. And he goes, these are your friends, Mikey Doodle. <coughs> and he starts buying rounds, right? And he buys pitcher after pitcher of beer because it's cheaper by the pitcher, apparently. And, uh, we're sitting there drinking, having a good time. Uh, I mean, that guy must, he drank a pitcher to the other four of us drinking a pitcher. So, and we drank the same amount of pitchers. So, four of us would drink a pitcher, he'd drink a pitcher. Four of us would drink a pitcher, he'd drink a pitcher. And finally, he is so drunk, he's stumbling around the parking lot and stuff. So, me and my buddy got him in the car. And the funny thing was, this is a huge man. You, you can't, his forearms were like that. I mean, they were huge. That, that dude could lift up a trunk of a tree out of the ground and toss it like Paul Bunyan, but he, uh, <laughs> we had to lift him up, and that was no easy task. And the bad thing was, I drove a Chevrolet Vega, and if you've ever seen one of those, they're tiny. They're little tiny cars. And so we had to hold them up and push them inward at the same time because it's a short, small car. Um, I used to call it the tin can because it was silver. And I took him home and stuff like that, and uh, I said, come on, big day, let's go in, let's go in. And he goes... I'm fine where I'm at. I'm fine where I'm at. And so uh, I uh, I said, okay, Big Daddy, I'll see you in the morning. Because I was done at that point. There was, there was no way my buddies were going. I was not lifting that dude up. And so uh, uh, I told him, and I told him, I'll see you in the morning. I'll see you in the morning. Love, love you, old man. Um, and so... I don't like that color. A little bit of a green here. Yeah. Got that one right there. All right. I think we're done here. Maybe we'll have a little mini moon here. Slight that up a bit. Give me a little mini moon inside my moon. And you can't just have one. There we go. The bird of paradise singing his little tune to the world. But anyway, the next morning I'm sleeping in bed, feeling not good at all. And <laughs> Big Daddy comes in the room. Michael! Michael! I said, What? Get up, boy! We got a problem! I go, What do you want, old man? I am not feeling good right now and he goes man i lost a hundred dollars last night and as tired and sick as i was i could not help but laugh because he did not lose that hundred dollars he spent that hundred dollars over and over and over i go you spent it he goes no i didn't i had a hundred dollars i said well i said i guess somebody took it wasn't me though you can check my pockets if you want I lost my man. I'm in trouble. Your grandma's gonna kill me. I go. I know. <laughs> and then I went back to sleep. <laughs> so, uh, I loved him. He taught me a lot of lessons, a lot about work ethic, and a lot about stuff like that. And in his way, he was a he was a very good man, a very loving man. But uh, he was rough, brother. That was a rough dude. And so, uh, 
And I miss him to this day. He's a good guy, boy. <laughs> I lost hundred dollars, Mike. Uh, yes, you did, sir. Right at the bar where you were spinning it. So I'm just gonna put a little, actually a little smaller dashes in this. I don't want to have big ones because they're sticking out too much. Let the bird of paradise fly up your nose, Jimmy Dickens. A million dollars to the person who names it and figures out how I can get a million dollars. All right. Jose, I feel your pain. Jose Trujillo, I love a, a good relationship with him. I like to uh, watch his lives and stuff. He's a great artist. I love his stuff. Um, it's it's different and unique in a way that makes it worth buying. So if you guys get a chance to buy some Jose Trujillo art, he sells his art the same place I do on eBay. But uh, yeah, he uh, my grandfather. But he would talk about. Uh, all kinds of stuff. But Jose Trujillo, man, I love that guy. Preaching the word of whatever he thinks is right, which is kind of cool. I'm more amused. I, I love Jose. He amuses me, and uh, that's weird to say of another artist. But I think sometimes he's a better entertainer. <laughs> yeah, I just really enjoy watching a guy's lives. And, you know, I like, love you, Jose. You're so entertaining. I'm just darkening these up a little bit. I know they're not as pretty as they used to be, probably, but I like the gray. I like the gray a lot, so I'm going to hit that gray. I'm going to thicken this tail up so it didn't look like just some things stuck on there. That looks really pretty. I like that um, little bird of paradise here. Let me rip this off. Uh, this is a nice little paint, but this is my, a lot of times I'll paint stuff like this and my little doodles out sitting around doodling and a lot of artists love to doodle on um, sketch paper and stuff and I do too sometimes sometimes I do that but I figure since I'm probably going to end up painting my doodle why not just doodle on the canvas and so that's what I do and uh, I have a, a great time I do this for fun I do sell them you can find my work on eBay on the 99 cent auctions, and I really guarantee you, you're going to love them if you go in there. Um, get in there and take them. I mean, right now, I mean, 99 cents. Basically, I lose two dollars every time you buy one of my paintings. But I don't really care. I want people to enjoy the art and enjoy the stuff. You can also look on my Poshmark account, Mike Tarver, uh, Poshmark account, and I have 150 paintings that I I have done over the years. I have paintings all across the United States. I just sold one to uh, a friend in South Carolina, a new friend. When you buy my painting, you become my friend. That's kind of the way that works. But uh, I just sold a, a, a new uh, a new painting to um, a new friend in uh, in North Carolina. I have them in Maine, California, Arizona, Utah. Um, pretty much just about everywhere I go, I, uh, everywhere I go, I get to actually see, um, uh, someone who has one of my paintings, if, if they wanted to see me. Um, I spent 21 years in the Air Force, so I've been all over the nation and the world, and there's probably paintings somewhere in Korea or Germany or somewhere, I don't know. But I, uh, I, I've gotten rid of sold many 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 paintings but you can go on eBay I think my eBay account is M I T A R underscore two seven four two and uh, Poshmark account you can just type in Mike Tarver and it'll search for my stuff on there and uh, you can buy this now I'm gonna I know this is a, a long time of talking but I really have a lot of paint left so I think I'm going to paint another one let me check and see who's following me today. All right. For all those who have been with me, thank you so much for following. Thank you so much for watching me paint. The Bird of Paradise is done. Um, let me see. 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 Um, I am going to move this one out of the way. Here it is. I'm going to show you the, the picture. 
There's the painting. Everybody look at that straight on. That's a beauty. That's a beauty. Yeah. Right there. And then I'm going to bring you both of these paintings will be on eBay sometime in the week. My son Ryan had just put a bunch of them on there. So um, they're really cool. cool. I think I shall do a landscape, a landscape today. And I really think it's cool landscape. This is an 11 by 14. It's not huge, it's small. The one I just did was a 16 by 20. I have painted uh, one really much larger than this. <coughs> but one was, uh, probably my best piece was donated to a school. And it hangs on their wall now, so I think that's really cool. And I'm just excited, man. I'm just very, very excited about um, having these lives, having you guys come on and share with me. I uh, hope you enjoyed the story of Big Daddy and Grandma. It was beautiful times in my life and happy times for me. And my brother hated me the whole time because he didn't dig the country. He wanted to be inside his room uh, dreaming of something wonderful, I'm sure. But uh, I enjoyed it. I, en I enjoyed my time there at my grandparents' house. Um, I'm going to do an impressionist one now because... I can. Uh, let's see. Let's have some mountains up in here like this. Mountains. Won't look nothing like that when I'm done. Blocking in the color, I'm going to go right through here. My horizon line is about right here at the bottom of the mountain. Um, if I'm wrong and you're an art person, you can let me know. I probably won't change my statement, but hey, you can show how smart you are. So, let's see what we got going on here. Yeah, we got it. All right. Um, just started my eBay account and got four under bid, and actually one just went out, as I told you, to North Carolina. Um, It's funny, if, if a famous painter sold as many paintings as I do, they'd be sick rich right now, but um, I'm more infamous, <laughs> infamous than famous, so I guess it doesn't really matter. But if I wanted to do something that was sort of variegated and moving and stuff. Um, Maybe a lake scene. I love lakes, man. I love the lake scenes and stuff. So, um, I'll probably do a lake scene with trees and stuff. And, um, but you know what I want? I want some buildings. Little houses over here like this. So I'll come back and fix that later. But, um, making my little dashes and stuff. Give my painting a sense of movement. Just keeping them a little darker than I normally would. Um, simply because I just don't want these to be that important. Just kind of a shape in the background. And I'll lighten them up here a little bit. And I'll come back when this all dries up and A lot of dashes and dots, people. What's Mr. Tarver famous for? Dashes and stinking dots. And back over here with some blue. A lot of blues and grays in this. This one looks like an old volcano. Blues and grays, blues and grays. A little darkness through here. Drop that down there like that. I'm not making this a very um, bold color right now. 
but I will come back and make it bolder later. I got some highlights. Drop in some more blues and greens. And right now, I'm just basically whipping out a few mountain, mountain ranges. And so, really pretty, pretty, pretty. Yeah, I loved it every summer going to my grandparents' house. That was, man, I did not come back without gaining weight. Made it tough when I started wrestling in high school because I'd stay in my weight class. But uh, it was so much fun. And you walk there and Grandma already had, you know, <laughs> she already had the cakes baked, the, pot, the pies ready to go. She knew my favorite thing. Whenever she cut tomatoes, she knows that I love tomatoes, so she would cut tomatoes uh, and have a plate of them for enough for 10 people to eat. And I ate them all. Never left the one tomato overturned. So. Just look here, making it sort of random. Sort of random, maybe I just bleed back in here like this. And you don't want everything to be the same, you know, you want things to sort of look lumpy lumpy. No, right. Now, as I usually do, a lot of artists like to work from the foreground. This is the foreground of the painting right down here. This is the middle of the painting and this is the top of the painting. I, I like to work from the top. I know that's weird and strange for some people, but I really, really, really like working from the top. And I really like working to the top from the top in sort of a, a sunset colors. And so I'm going to actually not start screaming white today because I'm going to have a pinkish, yellowish, almost a peach or skin color. And that's what I'm going to do in here. I'm, and I'm going to bring that here, up here. Now you notice that I did not prep my canvas because I usually have it pre-painted before I come online. But... Today, I did not do that. Today, I decided to bring my pigs and stuff later. I had only planned on finishing what, but I've drawn so much on that first one, on the bird of paradise or whatever. My son will name it something, so you'll have to look for the picture. I don't know what he's going to call it. Uh, I don't do that. I don't do the paperwork. I don't do the finances. I have plenty of money. I'm not rich. I don't have that kind of plenty of money, but I got food. I got some Fritos and some salsa. So, hey, what else do a uh, grumpy old dude need? So, yeah. But, yeah. And I love those kids. They just give me so much good stuff to work with. I mean, every day. And they try so hard. They try so hard. Um, because I will freak out if they don't. Because if I'm going to put my time and energy into those young people, they are going to put their time and energy into themselves. And so, but they are sensibly musical. I, they just make me laugh. And uh, most teachers would probably get upset if they had to teach the way I taught. I mean, that the kids would go, come on, old man, why do we got to do this? And I'm like, um, I don't know, but you're not going to make it to old man. That mouth of yours, you better watch it, sir. But uh, yeah, it's, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cheat because, you know, I can. Because I'm the producer, the director, and the actor of my own production here. Now I'm keeping it a little dark out toward the base of the mountains because this is going to be kind of sunsetty. Um, and this is not typical for me having these smooth surfaces. You guys have seen my paintings before. I do have some that are smooth there, but I, I kind of get bored with that. I kind of get bored with the flat looking stuff so i feel like if i'm not making seven thousand slashes and i'm not making the whole world vibrate then i'm not really being true to myself so, uh, i don't have a hair dryer maybe one day i'll grow up and get one out here <coughs> so i can go faster but i am not here to go fast i am here to have a blast somebody buys my paintings Thank you, Lord. Nobody buys my painting. Thank you, Lord. I had a whole lot of fun making it. And so, I spend my whole day with them kids. But I want to be happy at home. I don't want to be the guy sitting there going, What's wrong with you, Mike? 
Why didn't you do your homework and learn how to paint? So, we'll make this our basic thing, but you know I'm going to come in here and add a little feed into this guy here. Right. Now, I'm not too particularly worried about there being a lot of stuff. I'm just kind of sharing the colors with one, one another. Because pretty much nobody's going to pay a bit of attention to those mountains. Other than, hey, look, there's mountains back there. Yay! And they're not really back there even. In the way I, in my world, these are just like in a cove or somewhere where the boats are sailing through. Those are, maybe it's like Hawaii or something. I don't know. But wherever it is, we don't care about other flora, fauna, or anything else. We care about there being, yeah, I want that a lot lighter. There you go. Dashes and dashes and dashes and dashes and dots. I like it, I like it, I like it, I like it a lot. New theme song. Woo! Go team. But uh, yeah, man, this is, oh, this is fun. I have a good time. Uh, I have so many amazing kids, and but they're all kind of weird, you know? And they're like, you're weird, Mr. Tarver. I'm like, we're all weird, some kind of way. So don't get ahead of yourself there, Junior. But I had this one beautiful student, beautiful young lady, 10th you know, grader. And that child may be the clumsiest human being I have ever met. Beautiful, brilliant, smart, helps me out with everything. I love her to pieces. Name to Addison. So if Addison ever watches this, you get to hear about you. How much out of that you? Um, but uh, she she is awesome. She is the most. She straightens my room up. I mean, I she's like the dream student. Works on test keys for me and stuff. I mean, I almost just thought I call her and say, "Hey, go run my class today, girl." But that would be kind of really bad and unprofessional. So I didn't. Um, but Addison, bless her heart. <laughs> It's clumsy. That girl has hit her head, fallen down, bumped into things more times <clears throat> than a, you know, than somebody celebrating Mardi Gras. <laughs> like, eh. and she's not a drunk. I mean, she's a great kid, great wonderful kid. I love her, but uh, boy, she cannot stand up, um, and so. Every time she comes in and tells me how she hurt herself over the weekend, Mr. Tari, you're not going to believe what I did. And in my little mind, I'm going, I think I will actually believe what you did. So, <laughs> so I think I'm going to believe it. I believe. I like keeping a little of this pink coming through here. It kind of gives me a in the back. I'm not going to cover them all up. I'm going to leave some of them pink in there. Later on, I'll come in darken up different places, lighten up different places. So, there we go. So, this is my first two coats, three coats up here. I put three coats on really fast, so everybody noticed it. But I'm going to do basically the same thing in the sea here now. I'm, I will leave some of the dark stuff dark. And because they're farther away, I'm going to make them actually a little bit smaller. Than I would the ones as they come to me. So. Gotta get it done, gotta get it done, gotta get it done, 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 done. I want one there. And uh, yeah, but Addison, I just, oh man, I love her piece. Never believe what I've done. And she had had concussions and stuff like that. And God bless her, she's just the sweetest thing ever. I got RJ. RJ is my sleeper. Every class has a sleeper. You're a teacher. You know the one I'm talking about. Pretends to read. Right? They pretend to read. They get their. I said, oh, "You need to wake up." I, I'm awake. I'm just. I'm just. Uh, I'm. I'm reading really close to the book. Yeah. Why does your book now have slobber on it? Maybe you got a bit too close, and the snores that were going on was that reading too. But RJ, man. He, he sleeps. His mom's one of my fellow teachers. You can talk about a great lady to work with, man. She is awesome. But RJ, 
you turn your back him and my uh, my a little adopted granddaughter Kaylin, <laughs> who is who's 18 by the way. Uh, so unfortunately, I won't have her with me too many more years. But uh, they both sleep. I mean, you turn your back and those guys are gone. They're like sleep freaking ninjas. They're like I can sleep through anything. Nuclear Holocaust. What was our day? So sleep in the classroom. Building burnt down to the ground. Didn't touch him, but he's still asleep. So you know, there's <laughs> there's a. I mean, it's just. It's just mad, man. It's just mad that these kids can sleep like that. Aren't you, buddy? So he's a good musician, though, buddy. He's got he got some skills until he sings. But he can play that guitar. And every time there's an instrument, he picks it up. He starts to learn it. It's really, uh, it's a really interesting talent the kid has. Um, so you know, so he can't read or write. Who cares? Studio musician in the making. But his mom is always so supportive. She works so hard with, she has the upper elementary, she works with her kids. And they are, woo, they are some, I know if you're not in Georgia, if you're in the southeast, you know what I'm talking about. But man, some little kids are more redneck than, than the folks on Hee Haw. I mean, he's, he's a little boy. I just thought I was running through the wet the other day. Look what I found here. And he brings the carcass or something. I'm like, son, you can't bring dead animals to school. There's got to be a rule somewhere. I haven't seen it written, but I'm sure there is a rule about bringing dead animals to school. But ain't it cool? Didn't hear a single word I said. But ain't it cool? Yeah, that's cool. That's cool, man. That's cool that you got a dead animal in my class. It smelled bad. It's already fermenting. Kids are crazy, man. They just make me laugh. My really, really smart student, Ellie. She's so smart that she doesn't even have to work hard at being smart. You know that, that kid that irritated you because, you know, they're too smart? And they never, never seem to have to study, go in, make their 100s, and just look at you like, well, you know, it wasn't that hard. I don't know what a fractal equation is. <laughs> but, uh, but she actually may be one of the nicest loving. She has a heart for people she can see. When people are neglected, she can see when uh, somebody is uh, somebody doesn't have friends or doesn't know how to make friends, and she will just go up to them. And man, you know, just the opposite of being the one that everybody gets mad at because they're smart. They love Ellie. People love Ellie. They loved her brothers too, except for Nathaniel. Sorry, Nathaniel. I loved you, but <laughs> you know, you're kind of mean. But that's all right. Love them both. Love all that. They're the right family, buddy. They're good, good, good people. But they, you know, they, they do it. A lot of them play basketball for me. A lot of the girls. I coach a girls basketball team. It's not the same as the boys basketball team. Let me tell you that. The conversations are totally different. And I am not interested in hearing those conversations ever again. So. I'm not going to make this too horribly bright here. Kind of a nice pastel colors through here. I'm popping in some whites. And I'll do the same thing at the bottom. Just pop in some whites and some pinks. And little ripples on the water. You gotta have ripples. You know what I mean? You can't just have flat water. You gotta have ripples. Flat water is what you get in your bathtub. Nobody wants to sell a book in the bathtub. Well, actually, I did as a kid, but you know what I mean. I'm going to do something wild and crazy. I'm going to add some pink to it in here. I'm going to do here. I'm not trying to make it perfect. This is a good, fun one to do. I mean, this is, you can see it's taking next to no time to do this. And it's just a lot of fun to you know, put these pinks and whites and Man, you can put some yellows up in here. I like to have the Technicolor skies in my paintings. You know. <laughs> Just very pretty. <coughs> I am so sorry, folks. Pretty, pretty little dashes and dots to the painting, colors everywhere. And so, you know, it's not overwhelming, but it's still very pretty. And 
Okay. And I carry these yellows up in the sky because I like those yellows. So hit me some yellows up in here like this. And really, there's really not a whole lot more that needs to be done as far as the landscape on this one. I'm not. This is and this, the impressionists. They painted how things appeared, and they painted them very quickly. And so this is my mountain skies, and my touch it up with just a little bit of bling. Give me that bling. Give me a bling right down here. A few more blings through here. I don't even really care what direction. Van Gogh liked to have his brushstrokes all going in one direction. I don't really care. Nature don't go all in one direction. Why should I? Yeah, it's kind of pretty. Wow. Lighten some of these bolder strokes up here. A little bit of light blue on so. Yeah, I like that. End up with greens. You always end up with greens. You don't want to, but there they are. There they go. They're green. And then a lot of times, I'll come through and you know, take the really thin brush and make really thin lines. Give it a little bit more sense of motion, brighten it up maybe a little bit. I can take some of the other colors that are there and transpose them into different colors. This dude is on fire. Now, on the ocean, river, lake, lake, bank, bay, whatever, I usually will put sparkles like this. Big, bright, white sparkles. To it. I heard my cat fighting with a dog through the cat door. That's always interesting. And you never, there's, the problem is I don't bring people with me to tell me, hey, that's enough, stop there, you've done enough, stop, don't pay me more anymore. Don't do it, Mike. And I say, even if you were here, I still probably would not listen to what you told me. Not a good listener. I'm going to add in some reds. I get crazy with these colors, but I just love the colors. I mean, all the millions of little reds and blues and greens. And go through the sky with them, too, man. Put them up there. Make it all be the same thing. What sky, what split, we don't know. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Farther away you get from the center, the smaller your slashes are. Farther apart they are, I'm sorry. Balance this out a little bit, make it a little bit. Okay. That's ridiculous. Nothing ever looked like that. But that's what I'm going to paint. Because I can. I'm going to take some of this black and dark, dark blue here. I'm going to paint me a couple little boats. They don't have to, they don't have to look like, you know, a bass boat or nothing. They're just a boat. Let's get this in red. Nice big old red boat. 
And then we're going to come over here, and I'm going to use a tool that I love. Let's use this one. This nice and thin. Let's see if I can get away with it here. And I'm going to make a cell. I'm going to make a cell down here as well. I'm going to make a cell right here. Maybe there's a little boat way back over here. Little boat. Get a little mask going into the water there. On this boat, I'm going to like go wild here. Throw in the red in, man. The red. This is a red boat, so let's have a red ref reflection. Reflection. I have lost my ability to speak. Okay. And these guys are kind of dark blues. So I'm going to have a little blue reflection there. A little light, small reflection there. Okay, then I'm going to put on sails. A lot of people worry about the sails being perfect. I don't since I don't know how to sail. I was in the Air Force and we don't sail. Just the city bus. And then wherever the wherever the sail is, I'm gonna make a little boop, 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 there. And this has a sail on this bad boy. Let me go right around here like this. And it's really wet now, so I like to have you got a lot of paint on here. And I'm gonna come back in just a second with that one. So on there, I'm just okay. And this is gonna oh, Michael. Okay, let's try again. Take two. Um, take two. Okay, beautiful. Looking good, shaping up good there. Let's see who's online with us today. Bing! Toy Mateo Music. Hello, Mateo. Gilbert Samaka, welcome. AA5022100 join. I'm glad you guys are all online with me. Uh, if you feel the need to talk, feel free. Uh, Moonlight Painting joined us. Man, I'm just glad you're so glad you're all here. Um, you're the coolest, by the way. So, um, now, because I can, what I like to do, you know, I just what was it about the kids? Oh, yeah, the kids' school. They're just they're funny, man. They just uh, they like hilarious little comics. And, uh, man, I guess they crack me up. My little buddy Chris, who is this? Can't keep up with nothing. He reminds me of the peanut character, except he's really clean. He reminds me of the peanut character, uh, character, uh, pig pen. He's always losing stuff, so. Yeah. All right. Don't have to be perfect here. We have we're all just friends. So. Does that work? Not at all. Not at all. I'm going to come back here and make sure that this understands its way. All right. I don't think I'm going to little foam around the sea shore there. I think I'm going to call it a day with that one. Maybe put a little more white come over this way. Boom. Brighten that puppy. I put some thickness on there. A lot of times my paints become so thick you you could sand a piece of wood with it. Alright. Welcome to Miracle Bay. Well, I have had a blast of a time hanging out with you guys. Uh, do come see me again. Remember, you can buy my art on eBay, 99 cent auction. Uh, it's M I T A R underscore 
2742 and that takes you to my site. Just go to eBay and type that in. Or you can find me on Mike Tarver on um, on Poshmark and I have 150 pennies there. But get into that auction, man. You can get it cheap. My, uh, my sale today was a total of negative two. But somebody got a beautiful painting. And uh, bless them, man. I'm glad they did. Better out than in, I say. Well, until next time, folks, stay cool, uh, stay healthy, and stay off my lawn. Peace out.